So in this module, we will continue our discussion that we began related to steady state heat transfer in a rectangular wall, except this time we will look at conduction in cylindrical objects. So one example will be heat transfer in a tubular pipe. In food processing plants, we find several processing equipment in the shape of a cylinder and also, of course, um, liquids are uh, transported in cylindrical pipes and many times they are heated or cooled while they are contained in a cylindrical shaped chamber or in a pipe. So to develop a mathematical expression that will be useful to find out the rate of heat transfer in a cylindrical pipe, we will again use Fourier's law that we obtained earlier in uh, our discussion on the overview of uh, heat conduction except we will write that now in radial coordinates because we are looking at a cylindrical object. So we will write QR where the subscript R stands for the radial uh, coordinates. So QR equals minus KA DT over DR. So this is a differential equation uh, written in radial coordinates based on Fourier's law. To solve this equation, we will first write what the area stands for. So note that if you have a pipe, you have a circular cross section and the pipe will be of certain length. So the circumferential area through which heat will be transferring is 2 pi r, that is the circumference of a circle, times L. So the circumferential area is 2 pi r L for a pipe uh, that has a radius of r and the length is L. So we will substitute for area in our equation uh, qr equals minus k 2 pi r L dt over dr. Now to um, solve this equation we will again use the procedure of separating the variables and again the variables are temperature and the radial term, the radius. So uh, we will have QR and we will move everything related to radius on the left hand side. So QR times DR divided by 2 pi RL and on the right hand side we will be left with minus k dt. So now we can um, write our integrals. Uh, so we have qr which is a constant so we will keep that outside the integral. 2 is constant and pi is constant. Similarly l is constant so those will be kept outside the integral. So inside the integral we have dr divided by r and on the right hand side we have minus k K is constant, that's the thermal conductivity, and then we have the integral, and we have dt inside the integral. Now the boundary conditions are r is equal to ri, temperature is t equals ti. So note that this uh, pipe has a certain thickness. So the inside radius is Ri, outside radius is Ro. So at the inside radius, the temperature is Ti, outside radius, it's temperature To. And so for our boundary condition, then the second boundary condition will be R is equal to Ro, T will be equal to To. So we go ahead and uh, uh, evaluate the integrals. So we have QR divided by 2 pi L and uh, now remember again from your calculus that the integral for dr over r will be natural log of r and it will be evaluated from ri to ro and on the right hand side we have minus k the integral of dt is t and evaluated at ti to to. So we have qr 2 pi l 
and we have natural log evaluated at RO minus natural log evaluated at RI. And on the right hand side, it will be minus K TO minus TI. Then we can uh, further simplify the left hand side. Again, remember that um, if you have natural log A minus natural log B, you can write that in more compact form as natural log of A over B. So we will do the same thing here. We have Q R 2 pi L and we will have natural log of R O divided by R I and that will equal minus K T O minus T I. So our equation then for steady state heat transfer in radial coordinates is Q R minus 2 pi L K T O minus T I divided by natural log of R O over R I. And um, we can we can remove the negative sign by taking it to the inside of the parenthesis. So our final expression then Q R equals 2 pi L K T I minus T O divided by natural log R O over R I. So that is the rate of heat transfer in radial coordinates for a cylindrical pipe. Uh, note that this looks a little more complicated than what we had for the rate of heat transfer under steady state conditions for a rectangular wall. But the reason why we have this somewhat more complicated is because, the, uh, uh, because of the radius term, because when we were integrating uh, radius term was in the denominator which gave us the natural log term so we had to account for that and also note that if you go back to this pipe that as heat transfers through the thickness of that pipe the radial term keeps on changing right at the inside we have radius as ri but then as the uh, heat begins to transfer through this thickness of the wall the peripheral area will keep on changing. It will keep on increasing until you get to the outside radius. Uh, so those are some of the reasons why this expression is a little bit more complicated. But I would again like to introduce the thermal resistance concept. So again note that electrical resistance is given as R equals E over I. So that was for an electrical circuit. In our case uh, the E value is of course the temperature difference. So the temperature difference in our case is Ti minus To, that will be in the numerator, and the current is equivalent to Q. So thermal resistance equals, we substitute for QR, that is 2 pi LK Ti minus TO in the denominator, and the, in the numerator, we have natural log of RO over RI multiplied with TI minus TO. Now note that TI minus TO will cancel out. So we are left with R thermal for cylindrical coordinates is natural log of RO over RI divided by 2 pi LK. So this is the expression we will use anytime we need thermal resistance for cylindrical coordinates.